First of all, I want to thank the organizers for inviting me. I'm really sorry I wouldn't I didn't manage to come in person. Let's start. The main subject of the present talk is uh, Gorenstein commutative rings. The motivation behind it is the following with respect to the present to the present uh, workshop. Simplicial spheres, which mean simplicial complexes with geometric realization homeomorphic to a sphere is an important class of simplicial complexes and they have the crucial property, the very important property that the phase ring, that is the Stanley Reisner ring of a simplicial sphere over any field to be Gorenstein. Gorenstein means coin Macaulay's plus something extra, which is really useful. Both the coin Macaulay and the extra property. The first uh, definition, which you all know, is what does it mean if we have uh, two finite dimensional K vector spaces? to have a perfect pairing. A perfect pairing is defined by the property that every element, non-zero element on the first vector space V, there exists an element on the second vector space W with uh, which pairs non-zero with T. And similarly, for every element on W, there exists an element V on the first vector space such that it pairs non-zero. Here Z is just a, any one-dimensional vector space over the field K. It is simple linear algebra that if we have a perfect pairing between the vector spaces V and W, they have the same vector space dimension. And the motivating example is Poincare duality. And one of the statements of Poincare duality is as follows. That uh, under the assumptions that M is a uh, big compact, connected, orientable, smooth manifold without boundary, we have that for all i, that there is a perfect pairing between the Dirac cohomology spaces of uh, level i and n minus i, which is induced by just the wedge product of differential forms. Now we will discuss Gorenstein rings that are of a special type because this will be important in the applications and in the following talks. So we start with an infinite field, a polynomial ring over that field, and we have every variable to have degree one. We have I to be a homogeneous ideal, which is different than the ring. And our important object of study will be the quotient ring S, which is R divided by I. So we restrict to Gorenstein rings that are standard 
graded K algebra over an infinite field. And we denote by D the cruel dimension of S that was defined on the talk of Vasiliki. An important remark is that uh, we, since by our assumptions the field is infinite, D is the smallest integer S such that we can divide by S homogeneous degree one elements and get the quotient to be finite dimensional K vector space. In, in the previous talk, uh, we will use the notation Fi. What was in Karim's talk, theta i? Now we will define or recall what decouples what means linear system of parameters for S. We start with S, which has cruel dimension D, then a decouple with Fi linear elements will be called a linear system of parameters for S if the quotient is a finite dimensional K vector space. Since the field is infinite, such F always exists. If the field was finite, it could happen that we don't, such F doesn't exist. They will play, they are those, the F was denoted theta in the previous talk. An important object is A. So now we assume we have a linear system of parameters for S. And then we set A to be the quotient of S by the idea generated by the file. This way, A is a graded, standard graded, finite dimensional K vector space. So there exists an R unique such that AR is non-zero and every other graded part greater than R is zero. This is called the top degree of A. And A is just the direct sum of the graded parts AI with indices from zero to R. This is a proposition that says the following. Assume we have S, F, and A as before. The first important thing is that, and we assume that S is coin Macaulay. Then the first important thing is that F is a regular sequence for S. This is, a, in general, a much stronger property than dropping the dimension to zero. And it means what is it? And it means that the, the idea of generated by phi is different than S. Multiplica and deductively, multiplication by F1 up from S to S is injective. And moreover, for two, for all indices i between two and d, the multiplication by phi is injective from the quotient of s by the ideal generated by the first i minus one elements. 
less regular sequences play a very important part in homological algebra. For example, the causal complex that was mentioned in the previous talk by Karim is exact if and only if you have a regular sequence. The second property, which is essentially a consequence of one, but we will see is important for our applications combinatorics, is the following, that the if we multiply the Hilbert series of S by one minus stuff to the D, we get a polynomial of degree R with coefficients, the dimensions of the graded parts of A. A consequence of that is that these dimensions of the graded pieces AI is independent of the choice of linear system of parameters A. And this is due to the coin macaulay hypothesis on S. Are there any questions so far? We will use some standard notations about uh, graded modules. And as we will use the notation of shift if we have a graded module, a graded R module or graded S module. We can just shift it, which is the same module, but with degrees changed according to the formula taken on this on the pivot, on the slide. For example, the ring itself, which is out of shifted by zero, has the field in degree zero for obvious reasons. If we go to R minus three. This has zero in degree zero, and the field K has moved at degree three. Now, I mean, there is a notion of dualizing module that plays important role in commutative algebra and also in algebraic geometry in, with respect to shared duality. Fortunately, at least for this talk, it will play a very minor role, but it's important to define it because one of the most natural definitions of Gorenstein rings is in terms of it. So we are in a, on the special setting where we have a coin macaulay quotient of a polynomial ring by a homogeneous idea. Then we can define a, a Recall that the dualizing module of omega s is the module as in the slide. Two remarks is that m minus d is the crude dimension of r minus the crude dimension of s. And since we have all variables of degree one, r shifted by minus m is the dualizing module of the R, of the polynomial ring R. I mean, fortunately, we will not need this definition in, except to define Gorenstein rings. So we say that the ring in our format is Cohen Macaulay, is Gorenstein, sorry. If and only if it is coin Macaulay, and 
the dualized module omega s is isomorphic to a shift of the ring s. But uh, I mean, we will now try to give a, a very useful and more elementary criterion for us to be constant. And this will relate it to perfect pairings and uh, like an analog of Poincaré duality we saw for uh, the rank of homology. So we start with a coin Macaulay ring as before, and we fix a linear system of parameters, and we denote by A the quotient ring of S by the ideal generated by the linear system of parameters. And we denote by R the top degree of A which I remind you, it, it is a finite dimensional K vector space. That's why the components, fin the non-zero graded components finish some, at some point. Then we have the following proposition that the following are equivalent. S is Florence time and two, a is Poincaré duality algebra. What does it mean? It means that the, the top degree, the top vector space AR is a one dimensional K vector space. And for all I, which makes sense, the multiplication between AI and AR minus I to AR, the multiplication in A is a perfect pairing of finite dimensional K vector spaces. So we can, if we want to define uh, Gorenstein rings in our setting on this way. And this works for every linear system of parameters. Now, let me put a question which has, in my opinion, interesting the theoretical and practical applications. We are in the setting of a Gorenstein ring as in the previous slides. And we pass to an Artinian reduction of it. So I mean, we divide this by linear system of parameters for S. Now, since S is Gorenstein, the top part, AR, as we said, is a one dimensional K vector space. This means that there is a, at least one, and usually many, many isomorphisms from AR to the field K. Now, 
the question is, and this question arose from work, uh, joint work with uh, Vasiliki Petrotu and uh, Karima Di Prazito and uh, Johanna Steinmeier. Is there an element of this set of isomorphisms which has, in some sense, better properties than the other? Let's see. I, I repeat uh, the motivating example, but I will not read it again. We have uh, the Poincare duality on the Ramco homology of a suitable smooth manifold. M is a, has to be orientable, otherwise the top the rap homology is zero. And it's well known that after fixing an orientation on M, the integration of differential N forms on M provides, it, as it's well known, a natural isomorphism from the top of homology to R. Of the Ram cohomology to the field of real. So, on this setting, we do have a natural, uh, we do have, after fixing an orientation, a natural uh, isomorphism. And the uh, remark is that we will come back to the question in the following talk when we discuss about degree normalization. A priori, it's not obvious in the algebraic setting why we would need the, uh, why we, we would need the, uh, why the, there is a better isomorphism, but we will come back to that in a following, in a, you know, one of the following talks. So let's not talk more about it. But this is a really interesting question. Now, we, because it is an important, important notion in the Artinian gorenstein case, which means Gorenstein case of true dimension zero, we define the circle of A. A is again as before, a quotient of a coin Macaulay is a quotient of a coin Macaulay ring by a linear system of parameters. By definition, the circle of A is the elements of A that multiplied by any variable is zero. which means then the first observation is that the last part is definitely a subset of the circle because AR plus the A with index R plus one is zero. So definitely AR is a subset of the circle and it's trivial exercise to show that this is a K vector subspace of A. The Poincaré duality theorem we mentioned, Poincaré duality for Artinian Borenstein rings, has the following easy consequence. The test is Gorenstein. If and only if the circle is one dimensional, if and only if the circle of A is the R created is equal to AR. 
as we said, AR is always on the socle. And it's Gorenstein if and only if there are no more elements of the socle. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm, uh, I apologize. This proposition is not correct. I mean, two should you should add to two socle of A is AR and AR is one dimensional. Because it can very well happen that uh, AR is the socle is AR, but AR is more than one dimensional. So two should be replaced with socle of A is AR and AR is one dimensional. Are there any questions? It seems that not. We can continue. Now, as we said before, I mean, we can define the dimension of a homogeneous ideal, I, as the difference between the dimension of R, a dimension of R minus dimension of R divided by I, where dimension, we mean proof dimension. Moreover, we call a homogeneous ideal I Gorenstein if the quotient ring is Gorenstein. Moreover, a homogeneous ideal is called a complete intersection ideal if it can be generated by or dimension i elements of it. Usually, i needs, I mean, it can be very well the case that i needs many more generators than the codimension. For example, the ideal of the twisted, the homogeneous ideal of the twisted cubic in a, Projective space has con dimension two, but needs three generators. Let's do some examples from uh, simplicial complexes. If we have the face ideal of the boundary of the d-dimensional simplex, then I is an ideal generated by one element, which is the product of all xi. So in this case, I is a codimension one, complete intersectional idea. As it was mentioned in the talk, first talk by Vasiliki, if we have the face ideal of the boundary of the forgo, then I is generated by the two elements x1 times x3, comma x2 times x4, which means that it is a co-dimension to complete intersection idea. A useful and important theorem is that if we have a complete intersection ideal, then it is also Gorenstein. 
we will see in the next slides an example that the converse is not true. Now we define formally what means Artinian reduction of S. It is just uh, the quotient of uh, S by a linear system of parameters for S. The important, the next is an important theorem, which tells you that for a Siblesian sphere, the standard Eisner ring, the phase ring is very, very good. So, this theorem says that uh, if we have a Siblesian sphere of dimension D minus one, then the phase ring is current still. And moreover, if we have infinite field, the top degree of any Artinian reduction is equal to D. The coin macaulay part follows from uh, the discussion by Karim in the previous talk. And then you need some extra effort, little extra effort to get uh, a Gorenstein and the other, and that uh, the top degree is equal to D. But this is a key theorem in the study of Siblis, in the algebraic study of Stanley Eisner rings of Siblisian spheres. And we will certainly use it in the future. Now let us give an example of a coming from combinatorics from, from Siblesian spheres of a Gorenstein idea that is not a complete intersection. So let us let I be the face ideal of the boundary of the five. Then it is so obvious to see that it is generated by the five monomials and due to the previous theorem is Gorenstein. So here we have a condimension three Gorenstein idea that is not a complete perception idea. More generally, If M is greater or equal to five, the face of the boundary of the endpoint is a condimension M minus two Gorenstein ideal. That is not a complete intersection ideal. Two more examples. We assume that I, I, I is the face ideal of the boundary of the d-dimensional simplex. Then the top degree of A is D and all dimensions dK of AI is one for all I between zero and D. And the second example tells us what are the dimensions of the Artinian reductions of A for the case of the boundary of the endpoint. Mm -hmm. 
we will see that this in the following slides that this is just the h vector of b. So now we go to applications to Siblesian spheres. We recall the standard notation that fi of d denotes the number of i phases of d and for we set f minus one of d to be one. Moreover, we have the h vector of d and we recall that it is given by this combinatorial formula. We emphasize that the information of the f vector and of the h vector is the same, but it is uh, packaged on a different way. And for algebraic purposes, cumulative algebra, the h vector is more useful. And we will see why. The main reason is this proposition, which says the following. If we have a simplicial complex of dimension d minus one and the field that k infinite field that is going back only over this field, there is the quality of the hi of d which comes from the combinatorics of D and the dimension of the AI over K, which comes from the commutative algebra of the, of the Starley Rice derivative. We would like to know, for example, inequalities between the elements of the F vector. Then this, or properties, and then this, this is a, an important, a useful result to reduce problems to algebraic problems about A, or KD, the standard rise the rate of D. As an application, we get the following corollary. Assume we have a simplicial sphere of dimension d minus one. Then for all i, we have that the hi of d is h d minus i of d. Why that? Let's try to prove it. From the previous proposition, the hi of d is d k of ai. From the previous theorem, for simplicial spheres, the standard rise the rig is Gorenstein, through dimension d, and uh, the top degree of an Artinian reduction is equal to D. By putting these two facts together, to, we get this corollary. So it's essentially the corollary follows from the Gorenstein's of the phase ring of D over any field. An interesting remark is the following, that for I equals zero, the corollary gives H zero of D equals H D of D which implies the quality that is written there.
the alternating sum of the phi of D is equal to the topological Euler characteristic of the D minus one dimensional sphere as D minus one. Are there any questions? Okay, now I will define two notions that will be useful in the following. The first is the notion of generic Athenian reduction. And the second is the notion of generic anisotropy. What is the generic opinion reduction? We gave the definition of Artinian reduction, but there is not a unique Artinian reduction. It depends on the linear system of parameters. One of the good points of the generic Artinian reduction is that it is a canonical construction. It doesn't depend on any choices. And what we do in practice to give, what is the generic Artinian reduction? We start with a field K, which can be any field. Even the field with two elements can be very useful for that. And we have used it in previous papers, the field with two elements. Then we extend the field by putting new variables A, I, J, one for each variable J, and, it, and we define a phi to be this expression. So now the coefficients of Fi are new variables, which have nothing to do with the original field K. So in this way, we get like the more the most general possible Athenian reduction. So we do a field ex a transcendental field extension from K to the field that we call E. And we divide by Fi, where Fi are as generic as possible. One a reason why this is useful will appear in the next slides. Let's let me remark that again A is uh, a finite dimensional vector space. And this is an example coming, say, from geometry. We start with a fine coordinate ring of the unit circle. It has cruel dimension one. So we need to extend the field R to go to the rational field into new variables A11, A12. So E is the field of fraction of the polynomial ring into new variables A11, A12. And A is this quotient.
And now we go to the last uh, few pages of the talk. First, let me remind you what is the definition of anisotropic bilinear form. We assume we have a field and a non-zero finite dimensional k vector space. A symmetric k bilinear map is called anisotropic. If it has the property that q u u is non-zero for all non-zero u, it is easy. It's it's very easy linear algebra, but not very obvious. That this is equivalent to the following very strong form of non-degeneracy. That the restriction of this q to every non-zero vector subspace of V is non-degenerate. Now, let's see what happens when K is R. It's obvious that the symmetric bilinear form over R is anisotropic if and only if it is positive definite or negative definite. Then what happens over the complex numbers? Because the complex numbers is a An algebraically closed field, there is only one anisotropic form. I, I mean, it's not only one, but uh, you have that the form is anisotropic if and only if it is non zero and V is one dimensional. This says that over uh, fields, some fields like the real and the complex numbers. Anisotropy is, uh, is a rare property. But we will define generic anisotropy for the generic Artinian reduction. So we start again with an S, which is quotient of a polynomial ring by homogeneous ideal, standard graded, and we denote by A the generic Artinian reduction of S, and by R the top degree of A. And we give the following definition. We say that the K algebra S is generically anisotropic if every U square is non zero for every homogeneous element U in AI non zero when I is between zero and R half. Let me try to explain the definition. If U is a homogeneous element zero, of course the square is zero. If U is a homogeneous element on a degree greater than R half, of course, U square is zero because A, because we go on above the top degree. So if I is greater than strictly than R over half, or if U is zero, we necessarily have U square equal zero. This definition we call as generic anisotropic. So, in some sense, it can be stated that, except when it's impossible, U square for a homogeneous element is non zero. Uh, 
a remark is the following. We talk about generically anisotropic. If the third K was like the complex numbers, you wouldn't get anisotropy on, the, on any Artinian reduction. Except if it's one dimensional. So I want to emphasize that it's very important that this notion, generically anisotropic, refers to the generic Artinian reduction of S. On the generic Artinian reduction of S, we have put by definition all those variables AIJ. So there is more hope much more hope to have this condition sometimes. That's so for to speak about generical anisotropy, you need to go to the generic Artinian reduction. And then there are these two theorems by myself and Basiliki. The first states that uh, if you have any field of characteristic two and any Siblesian sphere, the phase ring is generical and isotropic. So this works for every Siblesian sphere, but over if only over fields of characteristic two. By the way, you can prove it. This implies it also over the field Q of the rationals quite easily. And the second theorem works over any field, but uh, for Siblesian spheres of dimension one only, over n bonds. And it states that the phase ring is again generic and isotropic. Why, especially the first theorem is of interest? Because with another easy argument, it applies uh, the G conjecture for uh, Siblesian spheres. An open question is what happens if we have any a field K arbitrary and arbitrary Siblesian sphere. Is the phase ring generic and isotropic or not? I mean, I, I personally believe that it should be true, but it, I have been unable to prove it. Let me give a small list of references. The books of Roots and Herzog and the Stanley are the main references for this kind of algebra. Commutative algebra with respect also to combinatorics. The book of Eisenbach is a great reference for commutative algebra. And then this preprint by with Oh, this 2020 preprint introduced the notion of generic anisotropy and proved uh, the two theorems. And thank you very much for your attention.